After I leave, there will be a fire to go to your And then he said, Remember, if you ever get money, then print books. And of course, in the end, in the last two weeks, he got that letter that you please preach this mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Western world. So he took that order. That became his life. Nothing else was important to him. He focused completely on this one instruction that I should preach this mission in the West. And amongst all of Shri Prabhupada brothers, it was always understood between him and Shri Saraswati that he would be that person to carry the vision to the Western world and to preach all over the world. It was always done. Many times, there are many different incidents. Once, of course, when he got initiated, they asked, so what service will you give him? Shri Saraswati Kapoor said, in time he will do everything. Then in Bombay, when he helped to establish the month, one Brahmachari was present when Shri Sridhar Maharaj asked Shri Saraswati Kapoor that you should make a lie the person in charge of this month. And Shri Saraswati Kapoor said, no, no, I have much bigger service for you. And then, during that time in Bombay, when Srila Saraswati Thakur and the other devotees were discussing who will be the next person to go to the West now that Bhan Maharaj has returned. Well, at that time, Srila Saraswati Thakur had suggested one other person, but that person was very fearful of going to the West to preach. So the Jewish Sarah Sunday Thakur said, no, no, don't worry. You don't have to go. He said, decide. A Bible will do everything. He will go. And he will do it. So in many ways, and even in the last party from the Namadweek in 1936, Jewish Sarah Sunday Thakur was discussing this point of how Bhan Maharaj had gone then Shiva Maharaj had gone, then Shiva Goswami Maharaj had gone. And he was talking about how it was the desire of Shiva Bhakti Thakur that the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should be preached in the Western world. And then he said that my saintly mother, Bhagavati Devi, requested me on her deathbed that you please see that the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was preached in the Western world. So, at that time, Shri Saraswati Thakur noted that although we have spent the lifeblood of Bodhiyamath to send preachers to the West, as of now it has not been completely successful because his uh, conception of the success was that we could establish some months in the West where we had devotees who were preaching the mission. And that had not been accomplished. So, at that time, the person who was relating the story, Nayana Baba, who was Shiva Prabhupada, Bhakti Swami Maharaj of Gautra, he said at that time Shiva Saraswati Thakur turned and he was looking to the side and he started looking directly at Srila Prabhupada, the Vaisharagaravinda. And they looked at each other in a very deep and meaningful way for some time. And then Srila Saraswati Thakur turned back to the crowd and he said, I have a prediction to make today. That whosoever shall go to the West to preach, no matter how long it takes for this person to go, when he goes, he will bring back the whole world. But in this way, it was always understood that this mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would be preached in the Western world by Shula A.C. 
Bhakti Vinanda Swami Prabhupada. That he would be the one to carry on his legacy. That Shula Bhakti Vinoda or Shula Saraswati Thakur had reestablished in their preaching mission. And that as they had prayed for uh, to happen in the Western world, that it was their deep yearning and desire for him to happen. So, Shula Prabhupada made this his life, this order, this instruction. And he associated with those persons who followed the orders of Shula Saraswati in the Chaitanya Charita Rita, he wrote that after the disappearance of Shula Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, there were two groups, the one who followed, who did not follow the order of Shula Prabhupada, and one group that followed that order of Shula Prabhupada, followed the orders of Shula Prabhupada. But that group has to be Shrila Bhakti Pranayana Keshu Goswami Maharaj. Because Srila Prabhupada agreed to start the Bodhi Vedanta Samiti with him, sign the documents, and establish that organization. Therefore, by this, Srila Prabhupada is giving his appreciation, support, and service to that person whom he has declared in his purpose as the one who was following the order of Shula Bhakti Siddhanta He took sannyas from him, he associated with him, and he had great affection for one of his most dear disciples, Shula Bhakti Siddhanta Narayan So in this way, Shila Prabhupada always made his life about following this order. When he came to the Western world, he approached the preaching mission with great humility. The stories are legendary of how, in the beginning, he would cook the meals in New York at this place. And after cooking the meal, he would serve it to the young men and women. They would eat. Then he would send them to rest. Then he would take all their plates and all the cooking utensils and clean them with his own hands. He never asked anyone to help him. Only when one person offered, Oh, can I, can I help you, Swami? Did he then come to and say, Yeah, you can help me. also. In this way, he showed us the path of how to endear oneself to others by very humbly offering service, love, and affection. Shilaprabha Bhaktisiddhanta, Shilaprabha Bhaktisiddhanta, Maharaj, he wrote in one letter to Shila Bhaktisiddhanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, he said, in the meeting with my Guru Maharaj, this is the first time I felt love. I understood the meaning of love. Because in this world, love means I will render some service to you so that I can get you to render some service to me. I will do something for you so that you can satisfy my senses so I will satisfy your senses. But Srila Thakur, he gave this definition that the tendency to give pleasure to Krishna, this is bhakti. And so when Srila Saraswati Thakur looked at Srila Prabhupada that day in 1922, he saw, here is one beautiful jiva, one flower they can offer at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna to satisfy his senses. This is love. This is real love. Shri Prabhupada felt that love. And he said in that love that in the same way as my Guru Maharaj expressed such love to me on first sight of me, on first sight of you, I also felt such love and affection for you. And so their relationship was very deep from first sight. 
So, when Shri Prabhupada preached throughout the Western world, there were many, many difficulties, many challenges, many, many obstacles. But he faced each obstacle with great determination. He never turned back. He wrote one letter to my godbrother one time, and he said, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has predicted that this mission will be preached in every town and village of the world. He said, He is God, so He can never be wrong. What He speaks must come true. He said, Somehow or other, by the mercy of my Guru Maharaj, I am engaged in doing the service of spreading the mission all over the world. He said, and if you help me, then you will also get some credit. He said, but you should know for certain that even if all of you leave me tomorrow, still this prediction will come true. Only somebody else will help and they will get the credit. Srila Prabhupada's determination was unstoppable. Unstoppable. He knew, I have been given this order and as long as I have pure Guru Nishtha, faith in this order, then all the power of Krishna and Guru is with me and I can accomplish anything. When he sat on the park bench, in 1965, when he used to walk up and down the river on the west side, he was all alone at that time. He had just arrived in America. He was living with Dr. Fisher. He would take his walk by the riverside there. And there was one elderly uh, gentleman who used to sit on the park bench and sometimes see him. So when my godbrother went to him, you know, was walking up and down, on 19, 1977, 1978, to write the biography. He met this man and he said, did, did you know Swami Prabhupada? He said, oh yeah, I met him. I remember him. He said he used to walk up and down all the time here and he would sit and talk with me. So he said, well, what did you discuss? And he said, well, he would ask me how old I was and where I came from and how many children I have and what my family was like. Then he would tell me about his family. One day he said that he asked me if I had all my teeth. And I told him, no, I'm missing so many teeth. And then he opened his mouth and said, see, even though I'm 70, I have all my teeth. <laughs> but then one day he said, I asked him, so, so who are you? What are you doing? He said, oh, he said, I have a big worldwide mission. I have a hundred temples all over the world and thousands of disciples. And I have printed over a hundred books and they are being distributed by the millions everywhere. And he said, but I never heard of you. He said, I've never seen these things. He said, yes, yes, they're all there. I'm simply separated from them by time. But he always knew, Shri Prabhupada always knew that this is my future, that this is what will manifest, that this will happen. This is the power of Sri Krishna and Sri Guru that was invested in Sri Prabhupada. And he distributed that power. Once here in Vrindavan, when he brought the first group of devotees to the West, he told them, he said, this here in Radhanavadar is where I prepared to preach in the Western world. This is where I prepared my mission. So one of the disciples, my godbrothers, asked, well, how should we prepare? Prabhupada said, you don't have to prepare. I am directly empowering you. This is the power of Gurudev. The Guru gives the power, and Srila Prabhupada understood this. He understood that the power is coming from my Guru Maharaj and from following his order, and therefore I can never deviate from the order of my Guru. 
Shri Prabhupada told one man who used to come and visit him there at Radhanamada. He was weeping one morning. That man used to come and visit him regularly. So the man asked him, why are you weeping? He said, this morning, when I was doing my bhajan in Rupa Swami Samadhi, Shri Saraswati Thakur, my guru, came to see me. And also Rupa Swami came to see me. And they told me, why are you here? Why are you just staying here? Now we have prepared everything. It is all ready for you. You go. Go immediately. And begin your preaching. And he went. He went and he lived in very difficult circumstances. They stole his typewriter. They stole his original manuscript of Gita. He got another one. He typed it over. One crazy drug hippie beat him one time in the apartment. Still, he never left. He never gave up the mission of his Guru Maharaj, no matter how many difficulties. Walking in the Bowery. The Bowery was such a place that when I was a young man, I was a big, strong young man, I was afraid to go to the Bowery. It was so dangerous. And he was walking there. He was walking there with no fear. Allah is Fearless. So Srila Prabhupada, he preached all over the world, everywhere in the world. He preached in Japan, in the Philippines, in Hong Kong, in Australia, in Malaysia, in India, in Russia. He preached in Africa, in East Africa and South Africa. He preached all over America, Canada, Mexico, Venezuela, Europe, in many different countries of Europe, England and Germany. France and Italy, all over, Amsterdam, everywhere, throughout the entire world, Shula Prabhupada has preached everywhere. He started many, many temples, 108 temples. By the time he left, there was over 108 temples established all over the world. This was what Shula Saraswati Thakur wanted, that there should be actually temples where people were becoming devotees and taking up the process of bhakti, and this Shri Prabhupada established. This he did. And so, the fulfillment of this prediction of Shri Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, you know, in Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagavad, there are three stories. One is how Nityananda asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that I want you should give this mercy to all the Jagais and Mahais. And there's one story where Gvaitacharya asked that I want you should give this mercy to the malicious and Yamanas of the world, not just the people of India. And then Vasudeva said, I want that you should liberate everyone in the whole universe, and I will stay here and suffer for their sins and let them all go back to God. So these three requests of these three pure devotees uh, were fulfilled by Srila Prabhupada. He was the one who brought this vision throughout the entire world, distributing books everywhere, preaching everywhere, even in countries he didn't go. I remember once when I came to Kenya and I met Srila Prabhupada there and he asked me, did you fly from Greece? I said, no Srila Prabhupada, I flew directly from London. He said, when I came here, I stopped in Greece. He said, we don't have anybody preaching there. But as soon as they saw me, everyone started chanting Hare Krishna. At the airport, everyone was going, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And even in places where we had no devotee, they knew who we feel the problem of. And what is mission of Hare Krishna? This was the power of the problem, how he preached all over the world. I'm going to give one analogy and then I'm going to end. Shri Bhakti Narod Thakur, he once he gave this analogy. That after the Buddhist Dharma had been established in India and Vedic Dharma had been removed, that in order to reestablish the temple of love of Godhead, first 
Shankar Acharya was sent to build the foundation of reestablishing the Vedas. And then, Madhva and Ramanuja Acharyas were sent in order to build the structure of the temple of Madhva. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came himself to install the deity of praying in the temple of Madhva. So I have added two things to this analysis. That it was by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Rupanuga Guru Varga. It was his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada, who brought the whole world to take darshan of this being. One further extension. Because after Shula Prabhupada brought everybody there, he had to leave untimely. I do not want to discuss this now. But if he had spent some more years, he could have given us some more intimate and deep instructions. So he looked around to find that person who could continue the mission. And who else could he turn to? But the person whom he saw with love, the way Shri Saraswati saw him with love so many years earlier. Therefore, I could understand that the one who Shri Prabhupada picked to instruct us what is the meaning of the deity of praying in the temple of love of Godhead was Philip Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. We are so fortunate that we got the association of Philip Bhaktivedanta. I don't know what I did. I was just a street boy. <laughs> but somehow I got lucky. I got the association of Shulapal. And then the association of Shulapal was the The association of Shulapal. I don't know how I could get so much good fortune. Scholars have written 
one in particular, but this is the first time since the time of the Roman Empire that a religion from the East has been practiced in the streets of the Western world. But none of us felt that we joined a religion when we joined the mission of Shri Prabhupada. We joined because he was a person who was giving love like the sun is giving heat. Everyone is looking for love in this world. And Shri Prabhupada had this uncanny ability to make every one of his disciples feel that, oh, love that you're looking for, it is at least. So, Sri Prabhupada took on this task given to him by his spiritual master to extend that love that Shri Prabhupada came to give and to bring it to every door in the whole world. So, I worship him who took from his heart, manifested from his heart, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Sri Krishna. The king and queen of Vrindavan took them from his heart, manifested from his heart, and brought them to the entire world. Prabhupada convinced us that our spiritual life was people's spiritual life. He made it very clear. I remember one of my governors, Yogeshwar, from America, who was one of the first preachers in France. And at one time he asked Prabhupada, oh, Prabhupada, what about my spiritual progress, my spiritual life? Prabhupada answered, your spiritual life is their spiritual life. Meaning, if you practice your selfish consciousness and you give it to others, your spiritual progress is warranted. So as the previous speaker has said, Prabhupada made an army of preachers. He can and the amazing thing is that us Westerners who are very free-minded, we are we were addicted to hedonism, we were not following any rules and regulations except the dictation of our mind. Prabhupada made us follow very, very strict Sadhana rules. But he made it in such an amazing way, following the recipe given by Shila Lupa Goswami. Mana Krishna Nivashari. Somehow or another become Krishna conscious. Then and all rules and regulations will follow. Like the King Kala, the serpent are following the master. Even the first time Prabhupada gave initiations, he did not tell the disciples he was supposed to follow four religious principles and chant sixty rounds. It's only the next morning they saw on the door of the temple room. All of you initiated the Buddhists must follow these four principles, no meeting, no disrespect, no gambling, no toxication, and chance six in one the day. He did not even tell them before. That was his trick, transcendental trick. But Prabhupada was so loving that there was no way to resist his love. He made you really feel that you were in front of someone who had genuine interest in you, no business, I scratch you back, you scratch my back. Not this type of love. Completely free given. Because the Guru is he who is expanding the love of Krishna to the function. So you could say that Krishna is like a general love for everyone. But when you come in touch with this new representative, that love becomes very specific. It really manifests it. And Prabhupada was empowered to do that, make everyone feel that love. And he presented himself in such a, an assuming way, such a humble way. One time in the airport, there was a uh, big reception of Prabhupada and the authorities became a noise, so okay, everyone should vacate the place. So they said, all devotees, come on, got on the chair, said, all devotees, please get up. And Prabhupada, like everybody, simply got up, that he was just to like that one. One of the devotees, Krishna asked, that's why I'm saying, he just got up simply. Prabhupada was sometimes you know, waiting in line to go to the shower in the early days. Imagine, someone sent you know, the spiritual world you know, to bring us to them. He was waiting in line simply to take the shower after you know, some of the things were joined a few days before. Like that. No, no conception of. No ego, oh, I am to do. 
the same time, when he came to preach, God was in the basic words. He was using very small words. Rascal was one of his favorite words. But these rascals, they do not know, therefore they are demons. Very heavy words. And he said, I'm not saying. Krishna Bhagavad Gita is saying, I'm not saying those words. Who am I to speak like that? Krishna said, anyone who doesn't want to surrender to Krishna, somehow or another, he's a one kind of rascal. He's a good Krishna. Bhagavad Gita is there. Now I'm just going to move it up. I'm not saying. Bhagavad Gita is saying. And Prabhupada established that faith in us that if you don't surrender to Krishna, whatever you do with your life, at the same time, you make it so easy, so accessible. Step by step, he was pulling from his transcendental hat, like a magician, so many new items. Oh, Tulasi, he introduced. No one did Tulasi before. And we have everyone started to go around this strange plant. Well, for us Westerners, it's like, what am I doing? It was one of the other the real devotee. What am I doing here? I'm turning around the plant here. At 4 o'clock in the morning. Then he introduced another one from the hat, Lord Deshengide. And I was thinking, who is that on the altar? There was a lion head. But it was something from Prabhupada presented as, as a matter of fact. And we all thought it lost stock and barrel. Everything he gave, we accepted. But some people they say, oh, Prabhupada, we preach the basics. No, every single thing is Prabhupada. If you take the nature of devotion, the most intimate things are given there. Now, Krishna in the morning, now, reminding of Shimatiradika of the love pastime of the night, Prabhupada has written it there. Krishna, no, painting Bhagali, no, dolphins or sea monsters, the symbol of Jupiter, on the breast of Shimatiradika. Prabhupada knows this in the nature of devotion. So what is that? That Vedi Bhakti. So the artist song probably introduced is that Vedi Bhakti, Morae, Abhilas, Vilas, Kujati, Ovas, we used to be big without knowing what we were saying really. But Prabhupada was pretty almost seeing his transcendental seed in our heart. Vilas, Kujati, Ovas, Nayane, Elikos, Sabai, Yuga, Rupas. My desires to be there in the Nikun of Vrindavan, but Shinjali, Nasa, Bhagavad Krishna. This is direct, you are the Pancharis are doing. From Rasa literature, this is what they're doing. He thinks to the states of the Guja to see the divine love um, in their loving embrace. This is, this is what Prabhupada was making us sing every morning, turning on the plant, the holy Tulsi. So Prabhupada introduced everything, but it took some time before um, someone else, after him, within his program, Shiva Govind Maharaj. Outside Shira Bhaktivedanta Shira Maharaj and now Shira Gurudev to join the dots or to put the dots of the eye and the cross of the teeth. It was all there, but we were so, such babies, such uh, infants in the spiritual life. We didn't know exactly what we were doing, but we had full faith. Prabhupada Jerry, this is the absolute truth. And we had that former hippies after three months, shaved head, bright face going to the street and preaching with so much tradition what they had heard from Prabhupada and that accepted that this is the absolute truth. Prabhupada gave us that conviction. This is the absolute truth. You can just follow step by step the process of Sadhana Bhakti and you can just believe, oh, in this one lifetime you can go back to God. One life. Prabhupada was such a transcendental twister. In one life, you can make it back to God. And if you don't make it, it's not wrong, you ruined really it, you missed it. So he gave us that conviction. He gave us that determination. If you do, as I'm telling you to do, simply follow, simply follow. Then you will come to perfection. And of course, if you read his book scrutinizingly, you will find here and there, oh, it may take some lives, but that was not the preaching. Which is what in one life, in this life, I guarantee if you follow me, I'll take you back to God. And Prabhupada will transfer to the weapon, for Shadam. That's what Prabhupada said. I did not you know, conquer the world, 
Why can they call the wings? Why would one was successful on the people of the Lord's feast? He said to Shiva Arvata, Oh, come, Hare Krishna is there. The world will not come. Let's go, Hare Krishna, my brother. The world will not come, Hare Krishna. But he said, No, make it so nice. Such nice for Salam. But oh, no, they are very nice. Look at these there. Such nice food is given. My brother knew he had such faith. He simply will take Prashadam, Prashadam will act. And so many people became devotees, not by philosophy, not further hippies, not coming to the temple, you know, stone, you know, having taken some drugs, you know, because the big thing in Amsterdam or Paris, take some girls here and go to the Hare Krishna temple in the Jirka. It's a special, you know, strength to the Hare. People were coming just on purpose to take drugs, and you could see this far of deities, Jagannath with big wrong eyes, and you look at his eyes, and then you go inside, and you just, you know, all this was what we had. But Prabhupada Salomon, what was by the Prashada, he brought us you know, to the temple and taken Prashada. And the magic, I never saw the magic of that, you know, take some cauliflower, dip in some batter, make it fry, and it becomes what? A pakoro. But I didn't use that in the West, what did the Pakora do to Samosa? The Prophet made that, and he, of course, gave us a trick by offering it to Krishna. The taste became completely different, and we became addicted. So I remember so many people I was preaching to on the Sunday feast. After a few days of Shimans, then they joined the Shepherd. I would preach to them or hit this and try to convince them that they had to chant or what do you get by smoking or what else do you whatever. And then by the brick, by the Prashana, they would leave the body. So Prabhupada made something that no one else could do. He was specifically empowered to present philosophy in a way that we would digest it. If you read the books of Shiva Bhattisimana Sathikata was so difficult to grasp, especially at that time. The prophet chewed that the mother bird was feeding his chicks, he's a baby chick. No, the prophet chewed the philosophy and presented it in such a way that he wouldn't understand. Oh, I am not this body, Krishna is God. Shri Mahaprabhu came through the chanting, he can purify your heart and reach love of God. The prophet made it very, very easy and feasible. Before I was practicing some other kind of yoga, very difficult. Ashtanga Yoga, oh, no oh. The Prabhupada, oh, very easy. Now, immediate results. You follow the recipe, you get the result. And with the love that face, and with the love that we were instruments of the Prabhupada to spread it all over the world. Om Shakar
one time he wrote to Gopi, uh, Gopal Krishna, he said, if need be, for preaching, I will also wear a suit. But he never did. His disciples did. We, the Bhaktivinanda Institute, I was a member of Bhaktivinanda Institute last, just before she and Prabhupada left. So we dressed in suits. And the devotees were making fun of us. He said, oh, they look like Mormons. So when they were talking to Gurudev about the problem, I saw the conversation book. So when somebody was saying, oh, the scientists are wearing suits, they look, the problem said, yes, they look very elegant. <laughs> so he was prepared to change. He was setting an example, but he was prepared to change. He taught by his example. He was so expert at cooking. He was so expert at dressing deities without any sewing, you tie knots. Because Shibi Graha and Anandi Chananda, we heard yesterday, he is expert in dressing Shibi Graha, Shri Radha and Krishna, not only deities, in the Mandir. Oh. Yeah, he could have to take a whole pile of chapati, put butter on the top, a key on the top, and <clears throat> like that, all of them would be butter. He was so expert. One time, he was with his disciples, it was a Kadashi. So he wanted a Kadashi. Uh, chapatis with buckwheat flour. And his disciples said, she wrote it, this is Prabhupada, it's impossible to make them puff. So Prabhupada marched into the chip kitchen. He cooked the, put on the first chapati. He put it on the plane, and it didn't puff up. And the disciples said, snigger. And then Prabhupada did the next chapati. It puffed up perfectly, he turned around and slung it in the face of the, of the disciples. So he was very expert, cooking, practicing, deity worship, preaching, writing, everything by his own example. He never led from behind, he led from in front. Everyone was caught along in his slipstream. <laughs> Here now, he was also very funny. So many jokes. I heard that he said he couldn't live without joking. One time one lady came, they didn't report that. She had a very short skirt, a big fur hat on. So she said, why do you shave your head to wear long robes? He said, oh, you like to keep your head warm and your legs cool, but we like to keep our heads cool and our legs warm. <laughs> it takes a cool head to understand Krishna consciousness. <laughs> he had no ambition. We've heard. He knew that he was going to be the one who spread Krishna consciousness all over the world, but he didn't know how. He didn't know how it would happen. What well, left he said was the appearance of his Guru Maharaj. That's when he said we started in the helpless way, in the hopeless way. He said, who knew there would be all these temples? Who knew there would be all these books, all these devotees? This is all Krishna's mercy. He depended completely. But he had this vision, like Bhagavad Maharaj said. He had an external vision how Krishna consciousness would spread to the world, and he had an internal vision how we could love Krishna. And he drew us into this. He drew us into this vision that we were going to spread Krishna consciousness and we were going to love Krishna. He engaged us. He was so brilliant. When he first came, he said, So you should count 64 rounds. The Bhagavad said, We can't do that. He said, Look, I count 32. And the Bhagavad came back and said, Sami, so we can't chant the chant, can't chant the two rounds either. All right, chant 16 minimum. And then you had a whole program of strong engagement. Morning program. Yadavadi Mangalarati, Jaffa, lecture, Kirtan, Tulsi Kirtan, Prashada. And they're going out on the streets. In the, in the early days, they were going out on the streets six, eight hours a day, high enough, chanting Hare Krishna in ecstasy. Ecstasy. If you see the video, you can see how much taste they had for the whole day. I hardly see it now. I wish I could get that taste. Book distribution, preaching, printing, so many practical tasks. Because he knew was very, very passionate. Very lazy as well. So he, he got us on that backside, and then he engaged us in strong activity, and by association, by this strong program of activity, Gradually, 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 he, he brought our consciousness up. He was always encouraging. He gave love to everybody. He appreciated everybody. One devotee, 
She came to run the accent. She didn't know I was sitting on the car, but she was throwing out sweets to the crowd. So she got sweets. Two years later, she joined. She was in the temple. And she the Prabhupada looked at her and he said, Just see, you were just getting sweets from the Rati Asha and now you're getting the world to wear the sun. And so much of them, especially in the beginning, when very much for his lady disciples also, uh, what's her name, King Himalati, she said to the Swami Khan. And also, oh, one of his disciples was lady disciples also sent him a gold ring. So he said, oh, I'm wearing a cap and it fits very nicely just to my head. He glorified uh, Govinda Dasi for bringing Tulsi, actually, Shuvat Bhagavatam, for bringing Tulsi to the West and growing Tulsi. Everybody felt loved and appreciated by him. My godfather, Bhagavatam, uh, Bhagavatam, one time, he was standing just like in the doorway. Prabhupada looked at him, head to toe. And he goes, Mm-hmm. And he felt completely appreciated, completely accepted. On when he came to Nairobi, every day somebody told him you should do the same service for him every day. So every day I put him a flower. And at the end, when he was just driving up the gravel path and the car was just going slowly, and I had one last flower, I ran off the knee. Oh, I remember Shashmi had stolen the, the flower that I had my eyes on. <laughs> I had to find another one. I ran after the car, and just on the side of Prabhupada was there, Brahmananda Maharaj was there. He leant over and he wound down the window. And Prabhupada was sitting, such a smile, he held out his hands and just dropped the flower in his hands. He gave me such a smile. For years after, all the philosophy, everything I ever heard from him, the thing that I really, really remember was that smile. He gave morning walks, he was instructing the devotees, encouraging the devotees, cutting down their mis- mis- uh, apprehension. He was very innocent, innovative, he was very daring, and at the same time he preserved the Vedic culture. He kept the essentials of the Vedic culture, but he changed what had to be changed. And he got chastised so much. Sixteen rounds instead of sixty-four rounds. Giving Brahmin threats to Westerners. You spoil the Hindu religion. One time he was in, in, in India, a whole group of Brahmanas that came up. It was just nice and just nice and just nice and just nice. He just stood with his head hung down. He didn't say anything. And they're going on and on and on. And in the end they ran out of steam and then they just left. So he came into so much heavy criticism. Criticism also from his god brothers. They didn't appreciate what he was doing. They couldn't believe that anyone could take Krishna consciousness to the West. That he did something that nobody could even believe was possible. They had a discussion before he left. That how that it was possible that Tabu Bhaktivinoda's message could be taken to the West. They did like animals there. And after the discussion, somebody said to Prabhupada, Do you really think that someone will take Tabu Bhaktivinoda's message to the West? Prabhupada said, Yes. But don't worry, it won't be you. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada, now it's his transcendental disappearance day. And he said, I will know how you love me by how you cooperate together to spread this mission. And Srila Gurda, he's repeating this instruction, he wants us to cooperate. We have so many brilliant individuals in this Sangha. Brilliant individuals who have been with Srila Prabhupada, brilliant, brilliant individuals who have been with Srila Bhagavad Maharaj, brilliant individuals who have so much association with our beloved Srila Gurudev. So it's very important, very essential, that the destiny of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is in this Sangha. Who else? It has to be Vaishnavas. Amongst the Vaishnavas, it has to be Gaudiya Vaishnavas, because they have the mercy and the power to go out into the world. And amongst the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, our mind, our Srila Prabhupada, he was the one who showed how to make a worldwide mission. And amongst his disciples, who has the energy and the power and the grace, except those who are associated with our beloved Srila Gurudev? Because to make this a reality, we'll have to cooperate in a new and very wonderful way. 
So I'm praying that I will be able to get some little service to be able to speak to my beloved Guru Maharaj, Shri Prabhupada, and Shri Gurude, and that I can associate with the wonderful devotees and help to make a very, very glorious uh, new faith in the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So now we've completed the speakers for this morning's session. Uh, there is going to be a continuation beginning here in the temple room at 10 o'clock. We'll have some little bit of gear talk and then four speakers will speak until the midday when we'll have the RT and Peace. We're going to have the push punctually at this time. I have a couple of announcements before that.